Is Frozen 2 a worthy sequel to the original? Let's dive in. First things first, we all really enjoyed the film. Um, it's not perfect by any means, neither was the original, but I think there's enough new stuff here to get people in the theaters and get excited for this movie. One of the big takeaways from the trailer, which is often the case it seems with Disney sequels, is they, they try to play it up like it's a lot darker, like it's a lot more adult, and why I do think this movie definitely is a little bit more aged up. It, it still has plenty of playful, goofy stuff. Olaf is... I mean, I think he's in it even more than the first one. He's got his solo number again. He's, he, uh, I, I thought Josh Gad was just going to annoy the crap out of me like he did in the first movie. I'm not a huge fan of Olaf. I could do without him. Here, though, <laughs> like 20 or 30 minutes in, I, I, I had enough of him already. But then somewhere along the 30-minute the mark, I, I started to get charmed by Josh Gad's Olaf. And there, there was a key moment where... The character is kind of reenacting things from the first that I thought was hilarious, and um, from that point on, I was I was I was cool with with Olaf. So if you're if you're an Olaf hater, Frozen Two might change your mind like it like it did mine. It might uh, warm your your frozen heart, as as they say. The sister dynamic that was a big theme in the first one is far more pronounced in this. The, the it, it takes center stage, as a matter of fact. The whole movie is about these two sticking together. Um, you know, taking on challenges as a team and not separating. That that theme is just constantly hitting you over the head to a almost annoying degree, but it never was enough to like, you know, take me off by any means. The whole gang's back for better and worse. Kristoff and Sven are here. I don't like this team. I'm sorry. That's I'm not I'm not, a, not team Kristoff and, and the reindeer. And he does the annoying thing with the voice again where he talks like the reindeer. And I just, I just can't do it. I'm sorry. Fair warning, if, if things in the first movie annoyed you, they, they are more pronounced in this one, I thought. Except for maybe the... Well, the plot of the first Frozen, I think, is just a complete disaster. It doesn't make any sense. If you thought about it for more than a second, you don't know how anything's happening, really, in the world. And this one, I feel like the writers went out of their way to kind of explain some stuff. Um... Most of it is explained with just magic, you know, it's just the kind of the Harry Potter thing, magic explains it all away, which is fine, I guess, to a degree, and I'm glad that they did at least address some stuff and kind of laugh at some of the stuff in the first movie. There, there's a few scenes that I, I, I got a good chuckle out of when Elsa kind of rolled her eyes at her, her past self. I will tell you who really liked this movie, and that was the audience of teenage girls that went, I, I don't know what it is, if it's the age or what, but... Holy crap, there wasn't uh, there wasn't 10 seconds that went by when they weren't laughing hysterically loud, crying hysterically loud, um, it, 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 talking nonstop. I just, uh, I, I was getting really annoyed of it, but uh, I'm guess you know, they had fun. So at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. It's all about the teenage girls having fun. My daughter Olivia really dug the music in this one, mainly from Elsa. I didn't, you know, I wasn't feeling it, honestly. The, the first movie, Love It or Hate It, there's no denying that that music is just, it, it just buries into your brain. It just stays with you. You know, you have, do you want to build a snowman? You have, um, you know, let it go, of course. Basically, every song in that thing is, is a, is a radio friendly, knock it out of the park replay song. And here, these, these felt more grown up. They felt more, I guess, performance play based, um, for whatever that means. They, they just, they didn't have that, Nicki Minaj starship quality. There wasn't that dumb hook that just stuck in your head with nonsensical, you know, verses carried in. This thing, there was very much a lot of talky singing, and some of the songs dragged out a lot longer, I thought, than in the first one. And you can tell they were trying to get that breakout, let it go again, but I don't think the movie ever finds that. There, there's no song that really stood out to me as that, wow, that's one that kids are going to listen to over and over again. And they tried. Elsa has two or three numbers on her own, and um, Anna has one, of course, again, but I, I just didn't, I didn't feel them. They were fine in, in terms of, you know, telling the story as it was progressing. They definitely felt like songs that were made for the movie and not so much made for YouTube replayability. There are surprisingly a very small amount of new characters. I was expecting a dozen or so, and... And, you know, maybe you could say there are six or seven, but they're so background that they're almost kind of inconsequential. None of them really provide any new 
substance to the story. They're just kind of there tagging along on the misadventures. And I guess that's not really even a complaint. It was just more of a more of an observation that usually when there's a sequel, there's one or two you know characters brought in that that really kind of changed the game. And here, not so much. There is a cute fire lizard that got the teenage girls going nuts. They're going crazy for that thing. I also forgot there's this super bizarre song in the movie. I won't go any further than that. You'll know what I'm talking about if you've seen it already or if you're going to see it. When it comes up, you will say, oh, that's what he's talking about. Super weird song. And it's not short. It's not short. And it's Kristoff based, which makes it even worse for me. Almost unbearable. I just, I couldn't wait for it to end. Uh, and it felt so out of place in this film, which I guess I could understand why, maybe that's why Frozen 1 works better for me. Um, I do think it, it's probably the better movie, which is weird to say because I think this one has a more complete script and it, it just has a better, I think it has better themes and whatnot than the first does, but the first feels more cohesive somehow, even though it clearly was disjointed in the, in the, the writing department. Clearly at one point Elsa was supposed to be evil and they changed it, yet somehow that movie feels more tonally intact than this one, which I thought was just kind of a bit all over the place. You know, it's, it's pretty slow at times. There is a lot of drama. A lot of drama, more than I think was needed. Then there are these just kind of goofy, silly parts that really feel out of place. And then it's back to serious. The, the last third of this movie, I think, is fantastic. And the whole movie should have been that beat. Unfortunately, it wasn't. But that last third, oof, that's good stuff. I hope they carry that on to the next one. The, it, it's definitely trying to be more adult. There's a, there's, a, there's a point where Olaf looks directly at the audience and says something like, you know, we're all growing up together, I, I think was, I'm paraphrasing, but it was very, he, all he had to do was wink at that point to the kids because it's been a few years since the last Frozen. Five or six, I think. I don't know, it seems like it's been a long time, even though there's been all those stupid short movies. Anyway, I'm rambling on. It, it was a good entertaining movie. I don't think you're going to be disappointed with it. If you like the first one, there's plenty here. Lots of callbacks to the original. Lots of fan service-y stuff. Um, the music is, 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 is enjoyable. It's just I don't think it hits those radio play echelons that the first did. And uh, yeah, I'd say, I'd say it's worth a trip. If you're a fan of the first, it's worth a trip. If you have kids and they like it, take them out and see it. There's, there's nothing that's going to, I think tick you off. That's my take on Frozen 2. If you agree, let me know in the comments. If you disagree, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if you want more car side reviews or movie feuds. Coming up, I'm doing Frozen versus Frozen 2 on my, my, my main show, Movie Feuds. So stick around for that. Those are a lot of fun. I dive a lot deeper into the, the story, the characters, the music, whatnot. So, so stick around for that, and uh, I'll see you next time.